I've got one marked for video. Serenity now, serenity now. Today, I have one marked for video. This one's gonna be a video, all right? Happy Valentine's Day, everybody. Today, I'm working on an iPhone 6S whose SIM slot looks like it's gotten more action than Dirk Diggler. This was sent here for data recovery, although it was just a SIM tray injury. I have no idea why we're after data, so I'm kind of worried about this one. And as you can see, I sort of already opened it and peeked in it to decide whether or not I was going to do a video. And I decided I'm going to do a video, so I'm going to show you what this phone looks like. As you can see, it's not that bad looking. It's a little bent up and dinged up here on top. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and take the screen assembly out of it so that I don't have any mishaps here and tear any wires or anything here. Now this is, uh, wait a minute, I said 6S, didn't I? This is not a 6S. This is an iPhone 6, which I am thoroughly glad to see. Not for any specific reason, uh, other than I have more experience with the iPhone 6. Look at me taking the battery shield off, even, even though the battery is already disconnected. You can expect me to make all kinds of mistakes and do silly things anytime a camera is running. I might just cut this whole part out of the video. Uh-oh. Don't get your screws mixed up. That's what you do. You get your screws mixed up. You pound the long screw into the short hole, all three short holes, and then you send it here for a backlight repair. All right, so we've got the uh, screen folded back here. I'm going to go ahead and disconnect it and get it out of my way. Now, I have not tried to power this on. These folks are concerned about data, and I've got this sneaky feeling when they were pounding the old, old Sim Taco here, they've got probably got a screwdriver down under the logic board or you know this thing I mean this thing's really taking a good hard pounding so let's have a look at it under the microscope Woo! more action than Dirk Diggler I tell you look at this thing somebody has had a field day with this thing between the dock connector and the sim slot on this one this thing has seen a lot of action all right, so we don't know why in the world this would be sent here for a no power repair. Uh, that's as far as I can zoom out, but I'll just kind of scroll across it. Everything seems to be intact. I don't see any broken solder joints. I see that the tray's a little bowed up. I mean, we could stand to bend that back down. Uh, the plastic, it is scraped away a little bit right here, but that all seems to be intact. Uh, hmm, no power. All right, well, let's do the responsible thing here. There's no long screw damage. Uh, I imagine they have plugged a charger in this thing and they have tried to turn it on, but they haven't hooked a DC supply to it set to two amps and tried to turn it on. So I'm gonna take the board out of it and I'm gonna have a good look at both sides of the board before we do this because I don't wanna slap this thing with some juice and screw stuff up. Focus, please, focus. Yep, that's as good as it gets, okay. I've lost my favorite screwdriver and it really sucks. This one's all squeaky and... I got up to go do something in a hurry and I laid it somewhere dumb. It's like, I didn't like lose it, lose it. I've laid it somewhere. And however long from now I'm going to wind up finding it and go, Oh, that's where I, that's what I did with it. So I'm pretty convinced that this phone is not going to boot and otherwise they would not have sent it here. I'm not sure how I'm going to post this, if I'm going to edit the crap out of it, or just post it as it is. I'm probably going to edit the crap out of it, make this uh, nice and short. I suspect we're going to find some crap broken under here from this thing, whatever they stuck into the old Sim Taco. Something got shoved in there nice and firm, and... I'm suspecting things broken on the bottom of the board because I don't think there's much they could have done to the Sim Taco 
that would have caused a no power situation here. There's definitely something weird going on. Probably deep inside the Sim Taco. I mean, deep, deep underneath the Sim Taco. Alright, so we'll take that screw out. We're going to disconnect our little antenna. Be sure to jab the screwdriver up under the board. Alright, we'll disconnect our camera. Jeez. And I'm supposed to micro solder. I can't even hit that screw. Alright, I think we're clear to take the board out and see what is going on inside the caverns of the taco. Here we go. I'm gonna Okay, I'm not gonna look at it. I, I have not looked at this yet. Let's let's get surprised together. I'm gonna spin the microscope around. I'm gonna turn the microscope on. I'm gonna focus it just above the bench. And we are going to evaluate the bottom of the board. Here we go. Oh, oh no! I'll be honest. I've never had one violated this hard through the sim taco. I mean, through the sim hole. But I assume this is what we would be getting into. It's probably going to be a fairly straightforward repair. Which is why I'm recording a video on it. I'm here to tell you, I've got a whole shelf full of stuff that's like... Backlight image, backlight image, and it's all really, really screwed up stuff. Well, not all of it, but enough of it to where I'm happy to run into one that I know is going to be a straightforward repair. So I, what am I going to do here? I guess let's pull up ZXW tool and see what has been violated here. Let's see. Let's, let's give you an iPhone 6, although it was sent here as a 6S. I'm just glad I'm not replacing a SIM tray today. And we're going to replace a couple of components here. I suspect that we've got something shorted out. And that is the reason they are concerned about data. So we've got C. That's a PP3V0 NAND line. And then the one right next to it is also PP3V0 NAND. Perhaps we got a, a hair hanging on the ground here, maybe. And that's 1V8 Oscar. So... We're not exactly sure what happened here because this here is ground. We could have ground here touching 1v8. I think that might be what's going on. Let's look at this really close. That may be what's going on. Or we could possibly have some continuity up here between... Uh, let's do this on here. It's easier for me to point out right now. It's uh, We could have some continuity traveling well no these are supposed to be connected so it's it's tough to say what's going on right here now you know what let's just fix it okay let's take these things off the board now that we know what i'm now that i know what i'm looking at i don't feel so bad to hook power up to it so we're going to go ahead and take these things off the board here and fix this stuff and then see if this phone will power on we can actually power it on without these things i'm sure all right i'm going to give this board a little bit of hot air here There we go. Let's see if we can get this thing to turn loose. Um, I might grab a hold of that with tweezers. Don't watch this. 
Oh my god, I'm such a noob. Don't don't watch this. This this is terrible. And watch now. Now I'm gonna get flux down inside this barometric pressure sensor. Let. Oh no, no. I think that's a barometric pressure sensor. Let's keep it dry. Okay, let's see if we can get in here and turn these. I should probably be more careful around the barometric pressure sensor. Out of all these boards that I've ultrasonic cleaned, I've never went back and tested... Fuck. I've never went back and tested the barometric pressure sensor. Which I probably should. I had somebody ask me once, just recently, Hey, have you ever had uh, trouble with the barometric pressure sensor? After ultrasonic cleaning the board, and I thought, you know what, I never checked it. Back during my Galaxy S... Come on, man. You're making me look like a noob. Trying to replace three capacitors. That's a solder paste. Let's not uh, let's not do that. All right, heat her up. There we go. There we go. That's there we go. That's all beautiful. All right. Now we don't know what our insults were on these lines. Uh, we know that there could have been some bad stuff here happened. I guess what's our what's our potential differences if we look at ZXW tool. Um, one of those was what a three volt line one was a 1.8 volt line so we might have potentially crossed a three volt line with a 1.8 volt line or shorted either of the two to ground i'm suspecting if it didn't boot could have been either one of those lines shorted to ground we didn't really check it just because we could look at it and see that it had been uh thoroughly pounded so uh let's grab a board to pull those components off of what are we dealing with a 15 microfarad 6.3 let's see here we're going to replace this with a Brand spanking new capacitor. There we go. I don't think people appreciate the, uh, uh, the size of some of the stuff is that we work on. This is actually the biggest component, one of the biggest components that I work with. That thing's like huge. So we're going to stick that big old capacitor right in there. And then right next to that, what is it? What else do we have here? We had a 4 volt 0.1 microfarad. I have not seen a 4 volt capacitor anywhere, so let me grab an iPhone 6 donor board here. That's a 6 plus. Oh, by the way, I'm using a wireless headset today, so nobody gets to see me get electrocuted every time I stand up out of my stool. Let's get down in and find us some of these thingies. Thingies, that's right. We're going to take thingies off of this board. All right, so let's unsolder this thingy. Nobody cares about that NAND right there anyway, so let's just unsolder it. There we go. So there's one of those thingies. We'll set it there. We are going to take this thingy. Ow, that hot air is hot. Let's get that out of the way because we don't really want it. We want this one. There we go. Could most likely leave the smaller cap off of here and not notice anything at all, but I'm ridiculous. I'm going to sit here and solder it on here. I wonder if I should do anything to that barometric pressure sensor. I've never had anybody come back and say, hey, ever since you worked on my phone, the altimeter don't work. I I've never had that before. I've had just about everything else, including passcodes, like... Seriously, for no reason, absolutely no reason in hell will I ever, ever put a passcode on your phone. Like, seriously. That's one of the most, that's like, when I see that, it's like, oh, dude, why? Like, why would I put a passcode on your phone? Like, for, like, what reason? I always respond very politely, because most of the time people are just mistaken, but... I have had people very firmly say it was not like this before I sent it. Which is really annoying. Okay. Alright, and then our little 01005 in there is going to be a real pain in my ass. So, let's see. Let me grab my blade here. And see if I can line this up. It's like a quest for tools. Like all the time. Always looking for something smaller. Oops. 
Now keep in mind, I did switch all this to leaded solder, so I'm being very careful not to go beyond the melting point of leaded. That way I know that I'm not actually accidentally going to float the NAND. All right, let's see if we can get this in place here. There we go, snapped in place nice and firm. This phone has seen a lot of firm things. All right. I just wonder what happened that caused somebody to have to carve out the symmetry. I suppose I'll go check the barometric pressure sensor. I'm not sure if there's a hole under it. I like I don't have any idea how that thing works. Dun 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 dun. dun, dun. All right, so that's pretty well cleaned up. Let's go ahead and pull a little bit of fuzz off of this barometric pressure sensor. I think that's what that is. Watch me spend this whole video calling that a barometric pressure sensor and then it not be it. That would just make me look like a noob. All right, noob. Let's put your noob board back into this noob housing, huh? Slow down. Dun, 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 dun. Taco cat. I'm wearing my taco cat. Taco cat shirt today. Okay, let's turn our power supply on. This phone is drawing zero amps. We are going to fold our screen over and we're going to push the power button. I bet it boots right up. There was just something goofy shorted, right? Didn't They didn't really smoke anything. Okay, so they do have, why would I even do that? Like, why would I use the customer screen assembly? I know better than that, right? Our supply is off. So I've turned the supply off. We're gonna go ahead and disconnect this steaming pile of broken LCD. And we're gonna hook up the best screen in the shop. It's always the best screen with me. I've got a, a I've actually got stock on these. I've got a handful of new s screens laying around all the time, yet I choose to use the broken ones because they wear out. Like, why would I sit here and use a brand new screen other than making my video look better, right? Okay, I could understand that. Okay, let's power this thing on. Uh, wait, let's turn the power supply on. And I'll push the power button in. Three, two. 90 milliamps, 80, 100, and 80, 100, 200, Apple logo. This thing is booting. And I think we are going to be good to go here. But I am very curious because this is a repair slash data recovery. It's one of those deals where they didn't want to like check it in as a data recovery because it's more expensive probably. <clears throat> so this is a repair slash data recovery and I'm gonna to try to send it back completely and totally working. Unable to activate touch ID, let's swipe. Yes, no passcode. Let's put in the SIM card. Let's see. Let's watch this as it goes in and make sure nothing crazy happens. So here we go. Here we go. Oh, yeah. Oh, you sexy bitch. Oh, yeah. Uh, okay. All right. Click. No SIM. Come on, SIM detect. You. You're not really gonna make me have to work, are you? Okay, we're gonna take this and put it under the microscope. And I'm gonna see if we can see the thing open. And we can, the thing is open. That's sim detect right there. When that thing is open, it should detect the sim card because as you pop the sim card out, it closes and that's what tells the phone there's no sim card. So. Let's go ahead, we're gonna pop the SIM card out. And then put it back in. I've had them sit on no SIM for a long time. So while that sits there on no SIM, I don't know if you can see it or not, uh, we're gonna have a look here at ZXW and see what else could have gotten damaged. What is this thing? What is, what is U2204? Let's open up a schematic and see what we're dealing with here because now we've got something to 
troubleshoot. RF. BB sim reset. What? Let's go. Okay, let's let's not do this. Let's not use our brains yet. That would be stupid. Let's turn the phone off. Let's take the board back out. And let's have another look. So at this point, you know, data recovery, success, repair, not success. So in many in many occasions, I would say data recovery can be easier than repair for two reasons. One, you don't have to fix everything. And two, you don't have to warranty data because data recovery is final. And this is not final. <laughs> this is, I've got it powering on, but now it don't work. So let's have another look at this with the microscope. I would imagine there's something here that I could see with my eyes that would prevent me from having to study schematics right now. So we have... Something came in here and crushed all over this. Oh, that's that thing on the schematics. That's that barometric pressure sensor. Okay, so probably not that. This thing here, though, what is this? <clears throat> this is some sort of a sim detecty thing, isn't it? And we've got like a chunk missing out of the logic board here, right? And let's have a good look inside the sim taco and make sure the pins aren't broke. So I'm gonna raise my microscope up a little bit. A little farther. Nope, a little less. We have six pins showing. I would say they should all make contact. It looks like they should all make contact. I don't know if any of you will be able to see that or not, but I sure can. I don't know, one of them might be a little low. If, if that's all we got, maybe I'll try to bend those pins out. But for now, let's go deep inside the taco. Uh, <laughs> let's check these solder joints. Let's make sure nothing wiggles. Uh, <laughs> all right. And just for giggles and shits, we're going to take and we're going to bend this up anyway. This one's low. Right here. Mm. Same with this. Um, I don't think it has anything to do with the tray. So let's, uh, let's have a look at this thing over here in circuit. We're going to look at this little gizmo here. Ooh, it's dark complected, so it doesn't really show up. This is VR3101 RF. So we're going to look for VR3101 RF on Blackfish. VR3101 underscore RF. SIM card ESD protection. All right. What the hell does this thing do? What? And what's DZ? What's... Eh, DZ3102RF. Let's consider all here. Let's have a look at this a little closer. Clock. Set. I have no idea what is it I'm looking at. We're just going to change that. Let, let's pull that off the board. I don't know what that is. I'm just going to replace it. I've got another iPhone 6 board laying here. Let's pull it off there and replace it. I am going to pause and back up this phone. Okay, let's grab one off the donor board first. So that way when I got the uh, target board hot, it can just stay hot. Off of the underfill there. I've always wondered how hard it is to drop a SIM card in the SIM tray or the SIM holder, whatever you call it. We'll call it the taco. 
without the tray like how do you put the card in the taco without the meat stick all right keep your meat stick out the sim tray now how do we keep our orientation here guys it's got a number on it right a z or is it a two dear god man all right it does have a dot I'm going to mark it toward the outside. I'll put a little scratch on it. That scratch is to let me know that's going to be towards me. Let's see if we can pop this off here with ease. I'm glad the one on my customer's board is not underfilled. Yeesh. Okay. Now what I'm going to do here, I'm going to hold on to this. I'm going to flux it, and I'm going to go ahead and tin it, because that looks like a pain in the ass to solder. All right, so here we are. Put some little fluxy f flux on it. Ooh. You sim detecting now. You sim detecting mother. You detect sim card. Dun, dun, dun. All right. That's going to suck. Let's get her flat on the table. I was trying not to put it flat on the table because then it might mess up my marking. It's got all this goop all over it. we got to take this stuff off of here. Go. Spin it around. This is not a component that I stock, believe it or not. I'm going to call that pretty much ready. Let's wipe it once more. Yeah, the 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 size of the stuff that we deal with. You got to figure for people that don't know what we're working with, if if you don't realize how small these tweezers are, these tweezers will stab you. They are like needles. They are not the finest tweezers in the world, but they are pretty dang fine. These are teeny tiny little tweezers. And okay, so let's set our little component out of the way. And I always set something on the bench to where I can point at it and see it. And then we're going to grab our customer's board here. And I'm going to pull that off their board. And also, do we have a dot on that one? Uh, it seems to be almost the same. Okay, let's zoom out a little. And I'm going to get a hold of that. I'm going to make sure that comes up as soon as this solder is about molten. Get a little more top down here so that I don't accidentally melt the uh, Sim Taco. Okay. Yeah, this was loose. That came loose with ease. Did you see that? I didn't... Hot air didn't take that off just now. I took it off with my pry tool. So, I just couldn't help myself. I had to give this phone a little bit more action and pry some more components off of it. Some taco... Taco. Little taco cat for your sim taco. All right. Let's see. Let's turn this up nice and good. I can see there being an issue if the center pad is built up higher than those outer pads. So maybe I'll let it dry. Like burn up the flux and then try to string some like that. So that way I've got. I don't want to high center it. I don't want to have the I don't want to have it teetering on the center. So all right, here is our donor component. And let's see if we can see my mark because I know the mark will tell me which way that to orient it. And try not to pew this thing across the room or I'll have to harvest another one. Yeah, I can see my mark. Right? 
Yeah, whatever. Okay. What happens if you put this on backwards? Alright, set this down. Now, from the time I've got the board switched over to leaded solder, for me that's comfort zone. That gives me freedom to work. Now, I'm not worried about uh, swelling balls under the NAND because leaded solder melts so much easier. Now I can just sit this on here and go. Before I was trying to pop it off at the very earliest point. And with leaded solder I don't have to worry about that near as much. Okay, we're going to go ahead and float this down on there now. There it goes. That's on there. All right, let's get some uh, alcohol on this with a Q-tip. tip Clean this up. I'm going to boot the phone back up and then see if we have sim detect. Oh, no. Okay. All right, I'm going to give you a camera that you can see this phone with. We're going to slide this back into the housing. Sucks knowing after I get this done, i got to replace the screen on it to finish the repair. But what are you going to do? I've sort of given up on sending them back not working. i gotta watch. got to watch what I say or people will drag me out in the street and throw rocks at me. Especially now more than ever, like everything gets cross-examined and analyzed. Wait a minute, did I just say anal? I did. Analyze. I'm anal. anal I'm gonna analyze my. An Wait a minute. I'm gonna, I'm gonna shut up. Okay, let's hook the let's hook the uh, power to this phone. I gotta have fun sometimes, guys. Start the camera and have a little bit of fun. And uh, not too much real-world talking today. Because I don't want to do anything real world. I just want to do my job and get paid for it here for a while. All right, we're at 4.2 volts. We are at, uh, it sucks growing up. It, it does. Power button, 90 milliamps, 100 milliamps, and we've got an Apple logo. So let's let this thing boot. Let's get iTunes, iTunes off my screen. And then we're going to see uh, if this thing will detect a SIM card. I don't think that component was actually bad. From it's, when I when I slid the blade in beside it, it moved really really easy. So I think what actually happened is it, it was it was loose. It's, it got all right. So unlock the screen. Surely whoever this is watched one of my videos or something before they sent it here. Hope it wasn't like their kid's phone. And now they'll never be able to show their kid that um, this video because I talk about it getting pounded. Uh-oh, we're searching. We're searching. We're searching. And it'll be searching forever because I didn't hook up the antenna down here. So we do have SIM detect, okay? Now we have no service. And that's because the antenna's not hooked up. So this is going to be a successful repair, and before I say anything else that causes me to second think posting this video, I'm going to move on. That is going to be it for this video. I really thank you for joining me. I thank you for watching. Um, all of your comments and your subs subscribes, I'm being serious now, uh, they really help to keep me going. And there has been some days I'm sitting here at this bench, and I've got a mountain of rabbit holes here, and it's like I've got five in a row that were sent here for no backlight, but they're actually triple hole long screw damaged with a, a smashed digitizer connector. And it's one thing after another, and uh, whenever I get positive comments from you guys and I see uh, good results and, and, and notifications and stuff, it really cheers me up and helps keep me going. So um, from the bottom of my heart, I want to thank all of you for your support and for your comments. It, uh, it really makes me feel good. It's awesome. It'll keep me posting videos and, and keep me fixing stuff in front of a camera. So I hope you all have a happy Valentine's Day. I hope you all have much success, more successful repairs than I do. And uh, I will see you next time. Thanks for watching, everybody. Have a good day.